It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we're gonna go over finishing up our Whack-A-Mole game for Unity 3D in our Virtual Reality Coding 1. You can see we're going to code the score, sounds, and the restart of our game. Come down here, you can see there's some media that we're gonna need, and here's kind of an example. You can see, as you swing the hammer and you hit it, you can see the scores going up, you can also see the timers going down. Let's actually play the game so you can see it. So here we go. And you can see I can move up. And you can see you can press space bar to restart. So that's what we're going to build. First thing you're gonna to need to do is go ahead and open up this. You're gonna to need to download these files. I already have these files and you can see I have them right here. So all I'm gonna do, let's make a new folder and I'm gonna call it sounds. I'm gonna open that folder and I'm gonna drag in all three files that I just gave you and get rid of that. And now let's just make some more space. So what do we wanna do first? Let's add these sounds into our thing. Let's give our stuff some really simple sound effects. So we got this background music in here and it's from an old game, Donkey Kong Country. Really goes really well with our game. So let's just add that. So on our game controller, we're gonna click on add and we're gonna do audio source right here. And all I'm gonna do is drag in my background music to the audio clip section. I'm gonna leave play on awake. That means when the game starts, I want you to start playing this. And I'm gonna turn looping on. Just by doing this, we've now added background music to our game. So let's press play and see what happens. So you can see there's my background music. These guys still work. None of this is working when I hit the guy, the score. We're gonna work on that in a second. Well, at least we have some cool background music now for our game. So now let's also add some sounds. Let's add some sound effects to our game objects. So go to prefabs, I wanna open up my mole. And what I wanna do is I wanna add, I wanna add the sound when the mole rises. So you can see here, this is show mole. And let me just play it. So when the mole pops up, it's gonna play the sound. All right, so let's go back on our mole. And let's add an audio source. And the audio source we're gonna add is show mole. And I'm going to turn off play on awake. I don't want it to play. Play on awake, what that does is when you press play when your game start, it plays that sound. I don't want this to start. So we have that on here. And now what I wanna do is when the mole rises, I wanna play that sound. So we need to edit our mole script. So go to scripts and come back into our scene and I'm going to open up our mole script. What we're going to need is to add in, get our audio source that we just added and then play it. So here I'm just going to say sound show mole, right? I'm going to say private audio source and what I'm going to say is sound effect show mole and then inside of start what I want to do is I'm gonna say, get the audio source to play when you show the mole. So we built this in as a private source, but we need to get it when the game first starts or when it opens up. And if we go back to our mole, right? You see, we have this audio source where well, we wanna get it when the game starts. To get it right here, what we're gonna say is sound effect show mole is equal to get component because it is a component connected to us, right? And what do we want to get? We want to get the audio source component. We do our parentheses and we put our semicolon. 
So this is saying get the component audio source. If we come and look at our mole again, all of these are components. Remember we add components. Well, this component is the auto source. We want to get our component called audio source. And that's what we're doing in this line of code. Now, now that we got it, all we want to do is simply play it. So whenever the mole is showing, we're going to scroll down here to show mole and I'm going to add play the show mole sound effect. So I'm going to say S and D sound effect show mole dot play. And I'm going to put my parentheses and I semicolon. And that's all we need to do to have that sound effect play when the mole shows. So let's go test it. Come back over to Unity. Let's check our console that we don't have any issues. No issues there. So let's press play. We should now have the sound effect when the mole shows up. There you go. So anytime the mole shows, you can see. So really easy, we've gotten some sound effects into our game. Now the other sound effect we have that I gave you, if you check back here in our sounds folder, is our hit mole sound. So when we hit the mole, it's going to put sound like this. So we want to add that to our hammer. So for the hammer, you can see I'm going to, where is my hammer? And I'm going to make this smaller. So for my hammer, I'm going to add, again, an audio source. And just like we did before, I need to add the audio clip here. So I'm going to drag hit mole into this little section. I'm also going to turn off play on awake. I don't want this to play when the game first starts. I only want it to play when we want it to play. All right, with that, now we need to update our hammer script, right? So let's update our hammer script. And just like we did for our mole, we need to get that audio source. So what are we doing up here in our variables? I'm just going to say day two variables. So these are our newer variables, right? And what I'm going to say private audio source and I'm going to say sound effect score. And this is going to be the hit mole sound, right? Now inside of my start, get the audio source. And what am I doing here? I'm going to say sound effect score is equal to get component just like we did before. I'm going to say audio source and parentheses and my semicolon. So there we go. Now that will play, but we haven't done anything with being able to actually hit the moles. So we, we're going to have to add some code to actually update when we hit the mole, we actually will hit them. And first we need to add some components in Unity. So let's go over here. Right now, if we click on our hammer, if we play our game, I can collide with these moles and nothing happens. So you can see, I can run right through them and nothing happens, right? I go right through these guys, nothing happens. Well, we want to change that. In order to change that, the moles, you see they have a collider. Our hammer has a collider as well, but I do want to change that. I don't want it to have a capsule collider. I want it to have a box collider. And we need to add one other thing, which is rigid body. So, I'm gonna, so let's delete our capsule collider from our hammer. Now on that, let's add a box collider. And I'm going to want this one right here, a 3D box collider. You can see it's right there on that hammer. That's what I want. And what I want to do, I want to edit it and drag this little button a little bit down. That way I can make sure I'm hitting the mole just in case my hammer is a little bit higher than where the moles are. All right. So that is our collider. I'm good with that. And the other thing we need to add is rigid body. So unless you have a rigid body, it will not detect the collision. So we're going to add to our hammer. We're just going to type rigid body. Make sure you select rigid body 3D, not 2D. And I don't want to use gravity because if I use gravity, that means my hammer is going to fall down and I can kind of show you that. So let's press play. Look at where's my hammer. If I press pause, look at my hammer. Look at the location. It's at X negative. 27. So I want you to pay attention to up here. If I press play, look, it's falling. It's falling, 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 falling. So 
we don't want to use gravity, and we also want to constrain it. Let me show you if I press play. Look, still having issues. So what we're going to do is inside a rigid body, we're going to click on constrain, and we're going to constrain everything. The X, the Y, the Z. We're constraining everything for rigid body. We really only want this to detect hitting with something else. We're freezing the position, we're freezing the rotation. So now if we press play, you can see everything works. So we still have what we got, and now we're able to detect collisions. So all we have to do now is actually update our hammer code, and then we should be able to hit these guys and play the sound, and eventually we're gonna actually add the score. So let's just work on hitting these guys, right? So I'm gonna open up my hammer script, and I just wanna show you, we can add in now that we have rigid body and we have a collider, we can add in our on collision inner script. And what that will do is it'll allow us, it, it gets called anytime it hits something. So we're gonna say on collision inner, anytime the hammer hits something else. So I'm gonna say private void on collision inner and this should be a collision called collision. And then I'm gonna do my brackets. So inside of here, the only thing I wanna hit is no I hit if I hit a mole. So get mole I hit using the tag mole. So what we're gonna do is I wanna check what that game object is. So I'm gonna say if in parentheses collision dot get me the game object dot tag is equal equal to mole so i want to see if whatever i'm hitting is the tag equal to mole if it is i know it's a mole well you're going to say wait a minute we didn't make a tag for mole yet i know that so let's come over here simply select one of our moles you can see up here it says untag so i'm going to click on that i'm going to go to add tag i'm going to click on the plus and i'm going to type mole I'm gonna click save. So now I've added a tag that I can use anywhere in my game. So I'm gonna click back on mole. I'm gonna select untagged. I'm gonna select mole. Now I changed it for this one mole, but because these are all prefabs, and you can see they're prefabs because they're blue, you can see our hammer is not a prefab. It This little box right here is just a white box. But when you see they're all prefabs, I can actually make one change and apply it to all the other prefabs that are like this. So since all of these are mole prefabs, I just added a tag to this, but let's let's check. So see, this mole is untagged. But if I click on this mole, it has a tag. Right here, I can click on overrides and click apply to all, and then it will apply these changes, whatever I did to this, to all of the other mole prefabs. So I'm gonna do apply all. Now if I click on this, you can see the tag is mole. So now I know, back over here in code, if the collision game object tag is mole, then I can do some stuff in here. And let's just simply show you that this is working. I'm gonna do debug.log, hit a mole. And all this is gonna do is gonna print out to the console whenever you hit a mole, because the tag is mole. So I'm gonna save. Let's come back over here, make sure we don't have any errors. I'm gonna click on my console, and I'm gonna press play. Now look down here. You can see it's showing hit a mole. So anytime I hit a mole, it is working. But we don't really want to just hit a mole. What we want to do is use this sound effect that we just did, sound effect score, right? So let's see that in action. So I'm going to delete this. I'm just going to comment it out. So I'll put two slashes for comments and let's say sound effect score dot play. And I'm going to put my semicolon and I'm going to save that. Now let's come over here, and anytime we hit a mole, we should hear that sound effect that we just did. So let's press play. Let's see. So you can see that is working. The only thing that is not working is our score. So our score is not working. Whenever we hit it, it's not, not doing anything. So let's check that out. 
So, check out the score on the wall. So you can see the score's not working. So let's work on that now. And we should be done with our game. We'll add a simple restart at the end. All right, so to have our score to work, under our day two variables, what we're gonna need to add is a couple things. So first we need to keep a private int score equals to zero. And this is going to hold the score in the game. And the next thing we need to do is we need to make a reference to our score text that is in our Unity game. So I could just do public text mesh. Let's call it score text, right? This is a reference to the score text in Unity. You never should really do private. You actually should public. You should say private. And in front of it, you should do serialize field. Serialize field makes a private variable in this class accessible inside of Unity. So let's save this and let's go link up this first. We come back over here and we click on our hammer. You can see our hammer script now has score text none. Well, I want this right here. So let's check in our room. Inside of game text, we have score text. So what I want to do is drag this and drop that right in here. So now I have access to this score text. All right, so now let's head back, close my room back. And what we wanna do in our hammer script is whenever the game starts, especially when we're restarting the game, we wanna make sure to reset our score. So inside of start, I'm gonna say reset score when the game starts. And I'm gonna say score is equal to zero. Really, really simple. Now down here we have we're hitting the mole inside of here and we want to first hide the mole. We want to play our sound effect and we want to update the score shown to the user. So versus doing everything inside of here, let's just make a simple procedure called update score. I'm going to say void update score. It's going to take nothing and inside of here. First we're going to do is score plus plus. And what that does is it adds one to the score, right? The other thing I'm going to do is say score text dot text is equal to, I'm going to say score with a semicolon plus the new score. So if I add one to the score, when I come to this score label, the score text is going to say score and the new score. So if it's score was zero and now it's one, it'll say score one. And I could leave my sound effect play up here, but I think I'll just put it down here inside of update score. So this is to update our score. Up here, what we do want to do is hide the mole and update score. So now I'm just going to simply call update score. What we did. And I want to get the mole and hide him anytime I hit him. So I can get the game object and then I can get the mole script from there. And let's just go back and look at this. So this is our game object. Each mole has a mole script, I can get that component. And if we look at our mole script, we have a method called hide mole. So again, following me here, I can get the game, the game object that I hit. The game object that I hit inside of there is a mole. From the mole, I can get any of these components. I want to get the mole script. From the mole script, I'm going to call hide mole to hide that mole. So it's going to look like this. So Let's just say hide mole. I'm going to say mole, mole I hit is equal to collision dot game object dot transform dot get component. The component I want to get is mole and my parentheses and my semicolon. So now that I got the mole that I hit, I simply want to say mole I hit dot hide mole like that. So once I get the mole, I'm over here, I can simply call that procedure. And that's all I really need to do in order to have our score work and everything is working in our game except for our restart. So let's test this, go ahead and save, come back over here and let's play. So now our score should work and everything should work. So you can see, look at the score.
Now you can see the game is over. I got 33 points. Now the issue is you cannot restart the game. So when the game is over, you have to press play. We don't want that to happen. We simply want to be able to press space again. And when we press space, we should be able to restart the game. So to do that, we're gonna add some text. So right click over here. I'm gonna do three text and I'm gonna call it restart game. Now let's move this guy all the way over here and put it right above our little moles. And you can see mine's is facing backwards. Yours should be facing forward. Remember my, my forward is actually backwards. So that's why mine's looks that. I'm just gonna use my rotate tool. I'm gonna rotate it. it, should be 180. So it's negative 180. I'm gonna type one negative 180 in here. Now, what are we gonna type for this? Press play to restart the game. And let's make that centered. And let's make the size something like 40. There we go. And now let's use our move tool and move it right over our little moles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide this. Actually, let's make it like 30, 30, eh, 35. All right, so actually let's scale it down some. There we go, and move it. So this will pop up when the game is over. And if they press, not press play, we want press space. Press space bar to restart game. So there we go. So this text we want to show up when the game is over and if the user presses space we want to start that game over so how are we going to do that we are going to edit our game controller our game controller controls when the game is over and we're going to need to add a area for us to add this text that we just added in so i'm going to open up my game controller script and at the top let me just say restart variables and this one, again, I'm gonna do serialized field, and then I'm going to say private text mesh. And what I'm gonna say is restart. Now I'm gonna save that and come back over here to my game controller. And on my game controller, you should see right now my restart text shows up. So I wanna grab this and drag it and drop it directly on this. So now I have access to this text. So if we come back over here in our game controller, have access to this. When the game starts, I want to actually hide that. So in every game object has a active or inactive field. And I want to set the I want to set the active for this text to false. And what does that do? So inside of Unity, if I click on this restart game text that we have, right next to the name, you can see right here, this is, is it on or not? Is it active or not? If I turn this off, it hides, if I turn it on, it shows. So we're gonna do that in code. We're simply gonna turn it off when the game starts. And when the game is over, we're gonna turn it on. And if they press space, we're gonna turn it off again. All right, so pretty straightforward. Inside of here, delete that. We're going to hide the restart text. So here I'm gonna say restart text dot game object, because I have to get the game object. And then I'm gonna say set active and parentheses and we'll say false in a semicolon so there i'm hiding the game so if i press play even though it's shown it should hide let's see if that works so right now you can see that text right you can see the text if i press play you can see we have an error unassigned reference a variable retard has not been assigned so i thought i assigned it but I assigned it when I actually was in play mode. Anytime you're in play mode, if you do anything, you actually aren't changing your game. You're just changing while you're playing the game. So when you stop the, playing the game, it's gonna go back to default. So the issue I'm having, why it's not working, is right here, you can see my game is not played. Now I need to drag this back in. So now it should work. When I press play, this should hide because I'm saying in my game controller script, hide, the restart text so you can see it it gets hidden so now we want to deal with when it actually the game is over we want to show it and we want to deal with how do we actually restart the game so inside of our updates where is the game over the game over is down here so one thing i want to do is i 
this is where the game is actually active. If the game timer is greater than zero, I want to actually move this inside because the game timer continues to go down even after the game is over. So let me just show you that. If I come over here and I press play, actually let's not waste 30 seconds. Let's go here and let's say 10 seconds is the game. I'm just going to update it for here. When the game timer is over, I want you to see it's going down. It's going to send game over. See, it says game over, and look at the game timer. It's continuing to go down. So we don't want that. We want it to stop when the game is over. So that's why I'm saying right here, we want to move this into when the game is playing. All right, so now we're only decreasing the game timer if the game is actually working. And the game is only working when the game timer is greater than zero. When it gets to zero, it stops. So now let's just press save, come back over here, click back on my game controller. See, I still left it at 10. Let's make it at five. And once it gets to zero, it should stop the game timer from going down. So you can see it's going down right here. And then it stops. That's what we want. All right, so now let's deal with showing this up and restarting our game and we are done. So down here is game is over. So we're gonna show the restart text. So we're gonna say restart text dot game object dot set active parentheses and we're gonna say true. So now we're gonna show our game object. Now let's save that and test that. Five seconds on the clock. It's hidden. Game over shows back here. Press space bar to restart the game. Well, the game's not restarting. My hammer is flipping. We gotta do one last thing. So inside of here, if the game is over, if the user presses space bar, restart the game. So if my parentheses input dot get key down key code dot space. So down here, the game is over. If the user presses space, what do we want to do? We want to restart the game. And to restart the game, all we have to do, I'm going to make a little function. I'm going to say void restart game. And I'm going to say scene manager dot load dot load scene dot scene manager dot get active scene dot name so this is the script to actually restart the game and if we're going to use that what we need to do is at the very top we need to say using unity engine dot scene management if we come back down if the user presses space all i'm going to simply do is call restart game And that'll come down here and restart the scene. Let's press save. Let's see if we have any issues. No issues. So our game is really short right now, but I just want to show you that it works. So when this says game over, you can see it starts over. Let's add some real time to this now that we can actually play. We are actually done. So let's say 30 seconds. Let's press play. So you can see the game is over. I got 36. If I press space, the game starts over. And there you go. This has been the tutorial on Whack-A-Mole 3D and Unity. We normally play this in our VR headsets, but if you don't have a VR headset, you can play it on the computer screen or export it to whatever game console that you want. 
this is done. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.